Well, interesting things are happening with the Saudis responding to the secret 28 pages by correctly claiming that the deep state within the U.S. committed their own false flag terror attack on 9-11-2001. Captain Rob Balsamo and pilots for 9-11 Truth have provided excellent technical analysis of the events of 9-11 to prove that the Saudis are correct. Balsamo's team of aviation experts have provided professional debunking of the government's official story of 9-11 to a level that exceeds reasonable doubt. Now Captain Balsamo is offering to investigate the issue of covert pollution of chemical aerosols released into the atmosphere, aka chemtrails. In 2011, NASA scientist Doug Rowland used the word chemtrails to describe release of such chemicals into the atmosphere. Doug Rowland is a heliophysicist at NASA who answered the phone on a citizen complaint about sounding rockets releasing lithium into the atmosphere. The following excerpt from a recorded phone call is common sense evidence that chemtrails is an accepted term used by NASA scientists to describe deployment of chemicals into the atmosphere. In these chemtrails, there's different kinds of chemtrails, as you probably know, different trails at night we use and different trails during the day. So it's been done in the 1970s, it's been done in the, recently in the 1990s and 2000s. Yeah, it's very important we, we, we communicate what we're doing to the public. We're very interested in making sure everyone knows what we're doing. We're not, um, we're a civilian space agency dedicated to science and research and so on. So we're very, uh, very keen to make sure that the taxpayers know what we're doing and everything. When you review the many video presentations that report the truth about the aircraft performance during 9-11, you may be encouraged to donate to the fundraising effort of $7,500 to kickstart the project in order to provide hard evidence for covert chemical pollution. Finally, we see a confluence of inspired actions on the issue of covert climate engineering with a lawsuit in Canada and another to follow in the U.S. with Geoengineering Watch using data from the Carnicom Institute and now hopefully pilots for 9-11 Truth. This is very encouraging in our determined mission to stop the pollution and the eco-terrorism of covert climate engineering. Keep looking up. What happened in the skies on the morning of September 11th, 2001? air defense seem to be ineffective. Now, where are you getting this information from on America 11? Turn your switch. Hey, turn the swim switches off. Just get rid of that crap. When discussing airspace surrounding our nation's capital, often the restricted airspace referred to is the prohibited areas around the Capitol building and the White House. We have to look further out. This is known as Class Bravo airspace. It is a highly controlled airspace in which you need a clearance to enter, including two-way radio communication and a working mode C transponder that reports your altitude. New York and Washington, D.C. both have Class Bravo airspace surrounding their hub airports. New York covers JFK, Newark, and LaGuardia, while Washington covers Baltimore, Reagan National in the middle, and west to Dulles. American 77 was lost from radar when its transponder was shut off at 8.56 a.m. This is 10 minutes after the first tower strike and 16 minutes after Washington was notified to keep an eye out for suspicious aircraft. Danielle O'Brien at Washington TRACON observed a fast-moving target penetrating Washington Class Bravo. She wasn't notified of the events in New York, yet Washington Center was advised. Why was this information seemingly intercepted from getting to TRACON controllers in Washington? Had Miss O'Brien and her colleagues been advised of the events in New York, would she have been more alert to have the target penetrating Washington Class Bravo intercepted? Would the word have gone out to the Langley fighters, who were now heading out over the Atlantic? If the unidentified target reached Washington, D.C., 
Certainly, Pentagon aircraft defense could have played a role if April Gallup is correct. Some have argued that the Pentagon would not have such a defense because Reagan National is so close, an aircraft departing and arriving could inadvertently be shot down. Those who make such arguments aren't familiar with how the national airspace system works. Most aircraft arriving into Reagan National are well known of their intentions prior to even departing their origin airport. Those that aren't are well known of their intentions prior to entering Washington Class Bravo, 30 miles from Reagan National. Those who don't communicate and perhaps have their transponders off, that is your target. Aside from the fact we already know it's impossible for an aircraft to have caused the physical damage at the Pentagon based on witnesses filmed on location and data provided by government agencies, an unidentified aircraft should not have been anywhere close to the Pentagon. It appears the interceptors were intercepted. Always one step behind the curve until the objectives were accomplished.